um, the um, GitOps Con, right? And so for yeah. those uh, for those of you who uh, let me um, grab that playlist. Yeah, yeah. If you grab that playlist, drop it in the in the chats. We did GitOps Con. We did a, a day zero event for KubeCon. Mm-hmm. Um, that went absolutely amazing, far beyond what I expected and hoped for. Um, all of you out there, you guys are awesome. Even with Thank the digital you. fatigue, even with the right. meeting fatigue, you guys stayed on uh, the average three hours. So that's that a was long amazing. time for someone, right? That was a long time for you guys to be um, um, to be sitting at a computer and, and watching talks, even after all the digital fatigue that we've been, been feeling. So, um, mm-hmm. which is part of the reason why we took a break, you know, during KubeCon and just that way you're not just inundated with stuff. So, um, so we're back. Right. And thank you everyone who, uh, who attended, uh, GitOps Con and, um, Chris is going to drop a link in the chat. Uh, yeah. I got to uh, dig up the playlist. Yeah. So yeah, earlier. take your, take your, Don't take your, <laughs> <laughs> too many tabs, right? Too many tabs. So. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, this week, so this week I'll be talking about application sets and um, app of apps design. So, um, I'm first. I'm gonna do. Let me share my screen, right? So let me get this up and running. Um, it's never where you think it is. Okay. Of uh, course not. No. Yeah. It'd just <laughs> be helpful. Not. Yeah. So let me know when you see my screen. Is that? Yeah, it's doing good. I got cool. Um. So. Um. I can't talk about um, application sets without first talking about app of apps. So in, mm-hmm. um, so let's talk a little bit more about app of apps. If you, if you Google app of apps, it's the first hit. So um, this is a, um, this was a, for now. A, a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's, it's kind of weird not seeing an ad first. Right. So that's, that's how, you know, this is very specific. Um, yeah. So uh, what's app of apps, right? So in, in the show description, um, it starts off with the chicken egg problem. And so the, the chicken egg thing is, um, okay, well, I have all these applications I want to deploy uh, in a GetOps fashion, right? So like I'm, mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm using Argo CD, I'm, I'm doing GetOps. I have all these applications. How do, I, how do I bootstrap in a GetOps way, right? How do I get my applications um, Bootstrap deployed and managed in a GitOps fashion, right? And this is what, um, let me make this a little bigger for those you don't see. It's, um, and let me drop this link here as well because it's, it's a good read. It's Thank the, um, uh, it's what we call app of apps pattern. So um, since Argo CD deploys only just, it all essentially is it's doing is it's applying YAML. Right or it's applying manifest, right? It could be mm-hmm. we we always assume YAML. I guess most people use YAML, but I mean, I guess you could do also do JSON, right? That's a valid um, um, uh, manifest, right? That that Kubernetes takes. So you have um, that all since all it's doing is applying YAML, then um, the um, the manifest for the application is also YAML, right? So the the, the, the idea was basically saying, well, I'm going to create an application that does nothing more than just deploy applications, right? So it's an application of applications, right? So, or app of apps, right? And here in this, in this little diagram, you can see um, uh, how, the, how that works basically, right? So you have an application that says, hey, deploy this application, this application, this application, that application, and then... Um, and then it'll, it'll go ahead and deploy um, those manifests, right? So then this does uh, two things, right? It's really dead simple to bootstrap, meaning that I can apply one manifest and get my entire, you know, infrastructure cluster up and running with one manifest. And then you kind of also kind of um, by uh, by extension, you get this convenient watcher app for all your applications. So um, so let's say here in this example, like someone accidentally deletes the guestbook application. Well, the application that deployed that application says, hey, that's missing Argo CD, then redeploys it. So you get this convenient um, watcher application, and then you kind of get um, uh, a way to roll these out 
so like you get the things like sync waves and uh, resource hooks, right? So it, for those of you who don't know what that is, there's another, um, uh, I did a stream about uh, resource hook and sync waves and things like that. So um, let's drop that playlist, red.ht, yeah, GitOps, yeah, right? So I, can, I think I um, have that as a short command. Yeah. Oh, do we have it? We have it as a bang command? That'd be I cool, so. GitOps, yes. If not, there's... Nice. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Let's say, if not, there should be. Um, I just need to change that arc, that link. But yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, that's yeah. Anyways. Well, it well, it points to the same thing. So we mm -hmm. we. Well, what's funny is me and Chris had the same idea, but we created different uh, Bitly links for it. <laughs> it points well, to the same. I know thing. at some point someone's going to come along and trample your GitOps thing. So I got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's kind of, it's like uh, those uh, those Instagram people. He's like, this is my backup account, right? In case right. Like someone. <laughs> <laughs> except this is <laughs> except this is for bitly right i guess this is right. the, the the tech the the marketing equivalent of that um so yeah so sync ways if you if you haven't if you haven't seen that i did a stream about that um you get that as well since it's it's um nothing other than just an application that deploys other applications um another ways um the people tried to solve this problem was um with helm right so they actually did a helm um they created a helm chart of a of a of an argo cd application right so they they kind of laid it out there right as a as a standard helm um helm template uh helm chart right and they uh they parameterized it right so they, they basically made it parameters um saying hey and this was kind of a convenient way to quickly stamp these out Right, um, kind of stamp the saying, hey, well, if I have one application to many clusters and I have many clusters defined, like how do I do that? You can do that with app of apps or you can do that in this Helm fashion where you just kind of say, um, you provide your values.yaml file mm -hmm. and then you can just quickly stamp them out like one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So, um, so that was another way of, of, uh, of doing this, right? And this is kind of, it, it was a, uh, um, it was an interesting way to solve the problem. And so the, um, some of the maintainers of Argo CD says, huh, why can't we just have built that into Argo CD, right? So, right. Um, so they came up with something called application sets. Uh, Argo CD, right? Uh, let me Google that. I'm doing this is very, oh, yeah. very- were, uh, Yeah, on the fly. On the fly. Um, well, I'm, I'm doing this very, um, what do you call it, Andrew style, right? Like, I'm just going to show you how, how I look, look things up. Yeah. Um, so this brings you here, but actually, there's an actual documentation site here. So I'll, uh, I'll bring that over here to the chat. And so the application sets is meant to make this a little bigger. Oops, wrong one. I was like, my Discord screen got a lot bigger i'm like that's the wrong one okay um <laughs> and so uh i got application set so the idea with the application set is essentially a um a, a graduation or a a a uh the, the next iteration of what application sets were it's just like all right let's since everyone's doing application sets and these helm charts let's kind of um uh, mix things, things together, right? Like, so actually, this make this a thing. So they call that an application set. So an application set is nothing more than, uh, I would like to say an application factory, right? So you, you give it, you know, um, one of the engineers, uh, I, was, I was talking to one of the engineers, Argo C engineers. I said, yeah, application set is nothing more than you give it this application set resource. It goes brrrr. And then a bunch of applications come out, right? So it's kind of like a, like a, <laughs> you know, it's like and sound effects out. and everything. Yeah, sound effects. The and money everything. counter so, going. Yeah, yeah, money <laughs> counter going, and it and it spits out applications, right? So it's it's um it's a simple it's essentially a templating agent to create applications, right? And so, um, before I go into um like how to like how to define it and you know how to use it, let's go to there's this um use cases there we go so there's there's a few use cases right um that it uh solves here so this it People gives you the zoom ability in like one more notch if you could just please. one more notch yeah yes, there we go. is that good oh, i didn't change the graphic size at all. Uh, there we go there we go okay um so 
yeah, you got the little Argonaut right here. So mm-hmm. essentially, you got a, a team working on a Git repo that you have Argo, and then you can stamp out your applications in, um, you know, kind of like a hub and spoke. And this is kind of the example I'm going to go through in, in, a, in a little bit is um, I got a central Argo and then many Kubernetes clusters and um, one application set, one application set can manage all of this for you. And so that's the, that was the, um, um, one of the, uh, one of the use cases, right? That it solves is that if you, you know, here it says it, I think perfectly, if you need to scale across large number of clusters and automatically respond to the life cycle of new clusters. So it's essentially hub and spoke management uh, model. So uh, another one, let's go over here, is um, um, if you have different teams, right? So if you have like an infra team working and uh, like a no, uh, another team working on, let's say an application, team two is working on another application, um, you can use uh, application sets to manage all that for you, right? So it's supposed to be flexible to be um, kind of a, a hub and spoke kind of design mm-hmm. or a, um, what do you call it, um, application scoped, right? Where it's like Argo CD can handle, um, you know, uh, what do you call that? Um, oh, man, it's been a long week. The word yeah, is almost- because I'm even blanking on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Multi-tenancy is what I'm there thinking you go. about. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so multi-tenancy, right? So it's meant to handle that as well. Um, and then, um, you know, it, it's also uh, supposed to be handling things like uh, self-service of uh, applications, right? So I can drop, let's say, a bunch of YAML and Argo CD will automatically uh, bring that up. So, um, And so with application sets, there are things called generators. Right, and so um, here in this, if you go to the generators, it'll list them. Um, there's different types of generators. There's one up, up and coming that I'll explain um, at the end. Uh, there's one that's um, list generator. And then um, I'm gonna go through this really quick because I actually have examples to go through here. And I have no, a cluster, cool. gen- okay. cluster generator. Um, uh, and then, uh, Hold on. Uh, uh, the Git generator. The Git generator actually has two sub um, generator categories. Is uh, one called a directory and one called a file, right? So there's three main there's three main generators: um, list, cluster, and Git. And Git has you know a sub sub generators, right? So let's go over um, um, some examples here that I have. If you guys want to, here I can hard link that. In the chat as well. So let's um, nice. let's Thank go you. over to Visual Studio, right? Visual Studio Code. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's look at the definitely list blow chat. that up, dude. Blow that up, yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what I have the set to. Okay, so there let's, you go. Um, list generator. Here we go. Is that good? Maybe one less. How's that? How's that look? That I know good. Noreen. Uh, Noreen's on. Let us know. Is it, yeah. Is that, is that yeah? Let us know if if I if I go one up or down here. So Narendra has uh, a question. Uh, oh yeah yeah. What what is the difference between multi-tenant and multi-cluster? Yeah. So which is um, a very valid point. Yeah. It's a very valid question. Yeah. So multi-tenant means it usually means that you have one cluster but many users in that cluster and they don't mm-hmm. necessarily know about each other, right? So you have like this is the idea of like a centralized cluster. Um, where you know team one is working on an application and team two is working on another application and they don't actually necessarily know about each other i mean i guess they can right it's a central cluster in your team but um plus up on size please just one plus okay um they don't necessarily know about each other that's that's multi-tenant right so you have many tenants in in one cluster whereas multi-cluster is exactly what it sounds like you have many clusters so um and it's not like or, right? You can have multiple clusters and all of them be multi-tenant, <laughs> right? So it's um, it's not one or the other. Um, so application set. So I have this application set. Um, this one is the list generator. List nice. generator takes, um, it's a simple kind of like, you're just listing elements, right? Mm. Um, you're doing essentially key value pairs, right? So cluster, I'm gonna call it cluster one. URL, this is the URL of that cluster, right? And then I just go through the list, cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. Um, 
And that's the, the generator section. And in the template section, I'm just taking um, what I listed up there and just plugging them in kind of like the Helm template idea, right? So this is, looks, looks very, um, the Helm, Helm charty thing that, that mm -hmm. I showed you earlier. This is kind of that, essentially that same idea. They're taking those key values and just using those to populate these things. So in this case, my name of my cluster is gonna, uh, my name of my application is gonna be um, each iteration of cluster. Um, and then uh, when I'm building the, the source repo, right? I'm taking things like cluster, right? I'm dropping it in here for my overlay. And then uh, my server URL, I obviously get it from that URL. Um, and so what this looks like, so let's go back here. Should I make this bigger? Let, let us know. So, yes. um, <laughs> so if <laughs> I do just tell you yes right now, yeah, it's just, just right now. Let's make it huge. How about that? Okay. There you go. All right. So let's do, um, I have, I've already, um, I have a management cluster and three clusters, right? So, um, like here, cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, right? So I have three Kubernetes clusters. Um, and then I have a central management cluster that I installed Argo CD on. So I can, you can see this with um, config, uh, what is it, get, yeah, get context. Uh, this will be hard to see, so I'll just do dash O name. <laughs> um, I have uh, three clusters that I'm connected to. I have, um, you know, one in Azure and, and three of them on AWS, uh, cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. Um, let's see how this looks like. This is... Yeah, that's ugly, but that's essentially what I have Sorry. here, right? Um, <laughs> and so, um, so then I have, if I do uh, get cluster, right? So then I have Argo CD, this clusters, I think. Uh, cluster list, is it? Yeah, okay. Right, I'm already, let me, let me clear this. I've already, um, you know, I have, I've already attached it Right, in cluster means the cluster that I'm running on. Uh, so the ah, okay. So, so and status then, unknown uh, is because you're there. Yeah, because I'm there. Yeah, um, yeah, because you like I'm already running here, so I don't need to add myself. It's kind of weird that does say status unknown, but um, hmm. let me go back here to the Argo City, and since I can see that here as well, uh, clusters. Right, I have cluster one. Cluster, make this bigger. How about that? Oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> cluster one, cluster two, and cluster three. Even here. more. Go bigger. One more. Go big or go home, right? Right. Yeah. Like the fact there's gray space, eliminated. Yeah, yeah. That's bad. <laughs> okay, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Just get rid of all the gray space. Yeah. Um so I have this here, uh three clusters, cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, right? And this um in cluster, this is the the one running on Azure. Um so what ends up happening is that um, when I go back to my application set is that essentially this is gonna build three applications. One in cluster one, one in um, cluster two, one in cluster three. So I'm gonna have, I have one app um, called BGD deployed across these clusters, cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. And depending on where it is, it's gonna show different colors. So how do I, what can I control click here? Yeah. Yes, open, I trust, I trust oh my myself. Gosh. Yeah, right. Like I, yeah, I, I think I turned that off a long time ago, but yeah, yeah, exactly. It turns itself back on from time to time. It's super, yeah, annoying. yeah like, when you do like when you do like an update or something, right? Right. Um, yeah. Let me do this. No, I really the, meant for you to save that setting. Yeah. List. Okay. So here I have overlays, right? So this, um, it, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, to visualize this, so uh, bear with me. You may have to watch this video a few times. It took me a while to kind of like piece everything together. Um, so here, so when this runs the first time, it'll pick up cluster one, right? And it'll drop it in here, right? So here, application sets, list generator overlays cluster one. So application sets, list generator overlays cluster one. And the change here is there might not be a change. It is blue. Right, so I'm gonna have them show a blue square. This, it, for those of you who've been watching a while, this is my yeah, uh, yeah, yeah application yeah. that shows the blue squares. Right, um, when it runs the second time, right, it'll go over overlays cluster. So the second time is cluster two. So let's visit that cluster two. Uh, oops, wrong file. I'm gonna make it green, 
And then the third one, when it runs the third time, it'll do yellow. I've added support for yellow. So it's not just blue, green, it's blue, green and yellow. Ooh. So fancy stuff going on. Well, yellow and blue make green. So this only makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So they, you got <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about uh, Andrew was uh, saying do CMYK, right? So, oh, uh, God, we, no, we, we can get crazy <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, so this is essentially, it'll create three applications. So, um, it'll, it'll load this, it'll run three times and I'll end up with three applications. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's, let's have a little fun here. Um, see, apply, uh, get, uh, get our examples, application sets, a list, right? So we're doing the list generator. Um, and then, so go, go. This is the, the brr thing I was telling you about earlier. So yeah. <laughs> so it's doing that. Let's go to Argo. Um, so now here you see oh. it created three applications. Boom. Nice. Right. It created uh, uh, here cluster one, right here in cluster two mm -hmm. and here in cluster three. So if I go to this guy here um, and let's go to this guy's route. I can't wait there. So there's an update. On, on Argo CD, I was actually talking to engineers today about it, that anytime it detects a, like a route or an ingress, it gives you that little um, external link. It gives you a little icon that you could click that takes you to that route or ingress point. Um, instead of now, I have to actually click on it, wait until it loads, scroll for infinity until I find it, copy it, open a new tab, paste it, Hit enter. Like it, it, it makes my life easier. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, so here it has the blue square, right? So let's go back here. Let's look at. Uh, Narendra has a question about namespaces. Um, uh -huh. Like I'm assuming you're just using default because it's a demo kind of deal and whatever. Um, or no, there's actually uh, a uh, an actual. Um, I'll answer that question. Um, right, right here after I show. But it, there's, as I a really good question. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what's going on. Um, and then cluster three, we should expect the yellow. So let's look at the yellow. I hope William Tam is watching because this is what I have to do. No, <laughs> that's the art. That's that, that's the. <laughs> this that's is how art. you submit issues nowadays. This is how right? I submit like issues. You, yeah. You One, <laughs> yeah, publicly shaming people. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there's it goes yellow, right? Um, <laughs> that's how you get RFPs in, right? So that's yellow, right? So yeah. blue, green, yellow um, in different clusters, right? So I have, so there's a few things going on here. Um, with one manifest, I was able to create three applications spread across three different clusters. Um, mm -hmm. So now to Nariv, um, uh, Narev's question, right? So here, um, um, here I'm... Um, the application set actual manifest lives in a namespace called OpenShift GitOps. Um, here, I am deploying the application to a um, to a namespace called BGD. Right. So if I go to say here cluster one, let's make this a little bigger. Oops. Control Shift. That's maybe one too many. Oh well. Uh, so if I do K get uh, uh, namespace. Well, I can actually do here BGD, right? It'll show up like BGD. So it actually, I'm actually deploying the application in BGD here. Um, when you see default here, this is a, a project, but in, in the context in Argo. of Argo CD. So right. Argo CD has its own concept of a project. If I go over here, uh, yeah, one of the filters here, um, project. It has a project here. I haven't, I haven't created other projects inside of Argo CD. So the reason um, that's the multi-tenancy aspect of it, right? You can create different namespaces inside of Argo and give permissions to those namespaces to different developers. So, um, so yeah, so there it is. So that's the answer to that. So that default project has nothing to do with a Kubernetes default project. It, it's kind of confusing a little bit. A little um, bit, yeah. Um, be just because it's called project, you know, right? Like because it's called project, right? Yeah, and also um, they don't behave the same either. No, they're so, completely different things, right? Yeah, like, they're different paradigms, um, even. Yeah. So it's it's kind of um, 
So it's, maybe I should do a show about that, like how the maybe, paradigm, yeah. how, 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 how it differs, right? Because like it, it is- Like a mental shift that has to happen, yeah. Exactly. And so, cool. So um, uh, so that's, that's what that is there. So I deployed an application there. If I go and um, delete this, right? Cluster one. For shame. For shame. Cluster one, BGD. I do a foreground delete. Um, it'll actually delete the, the application, but the application set, since it's watching it, automatically recreates it. So it's saying, oh, hey, you wanted you know, this application to be created. Now it's gone. Well, I'm going to recreate it. And so that's the, um, uh, that's that you know, overarching watcher. So um, kind of recap, it's kind of a um, key value pair to in order to build um, the the application the actual application um, manifest right and maybe I should show the actual application manifest so if I do k get applications open shift uh, get, get up ops, right it should show three right yep. oh and if I if I want to show um, oops application sets you just add ets to it right and mm -hmm. it shows the bg application set. So if I do applications and I do a uh, you know um, cluster one BGD, actually let me edit this so we can see. So as you see, it just built the um, application manifest based on the template. So, so um, um, mm -hmm. this is a fair question, so I'm going to ask it. Are you using? Like what shell are you using? What enhancements? That kind of thing. Because shell all, in in your terminal window here, yeah. Uh, like, I'm just using like as in power bash line. or power or, line. This is actually a pure line. Pure line. So, okay. Which it. is which is kind of like power line. So if you look at power line, get familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, the the only problem with power line is that it launches a Python subshell. So all so um, anyways, um, let's, Hillary let's called. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Hillary, cover your ears. I, I don't want the overhead of Python running. So there's this there's this other thing called pure line that does everything power line does, except in bash. So there you go. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Um, so look up uh, pure line. And so, and also I'm just using K instead of kubectl because I just created an alias. So, um, oh yeah, one thing I did want to um, note about the list generator is that this has to be cluster and this has to be URL. They're not just dumb key value pairs. You actually have to name it cluster and you actually have to name it URL. Okay. Um, there is an RFE to make that any key value pair. Uh, so that's out there. Um, they're actively being worked on. And then um, uh, a way around that today is there's this unknown um, field called values. Mm -hmm. And that could be any key value pair, right? Like foo equals a bar, right? And then down here, instead of cluster, you can do things like, um, you know, values foo, right? So you can kind of get around uh, the fact that it isn't just a key value pair. Um, so, so that's the list generator. So the next one, one of my favorites, let's, let's delete that. Um, let's delete these applications, uh, delete. All right, cool. One manifest, this should all go away. Yes, so now it's starting to delete. So the next one I wanna talk about is the cluster generator. So, um, Cluster generators, here we go. And so here, um, here let, me let me remove some of this stuff here so that way you can clearly see. This is, this is these are my notes. Um, Cause as you see, I'm learning as, cause this is new. Oh, this is one thing I forgot to mention, Chris, that we got yelled mm. about, yelled at about. Um, you got yelled at about? We did. Really? Uh, oh, we did? Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, so application sets, um, uh, the OpenShift GitOps operator is GA. Yes. Application sets come along with the GitOps operator. However, they are tech preview. So right, 
there we go that's your so thank you for saying that. yeah yeah and... yeah, yeah. I, I just completely forgot i'm like whoa i should say that these are tech previews so tech preview meaning that um you call you know if you have an issue you can call red hat for support but you may not get the same support right it's like best effort um right so it's not a fully baked set of support yeah. docs and everything yeah. else yet yeah yeah and then as as you see this is um it's still an alpha right so if you um if you've seen the first line mm -hmm. it's not v1 it's v1 alpha one so it's technically you know it's it's tech preview new, new. <laughs> yeah it's new new so there will be breaking changes later right so like right. you know yeah, uh, assume that, assume there'll be breaking changes. So, mm -hmm. um, so the cluster um, generator, a little background about cluster generators. So if you go here, um, if I do Argo CD cluster list or list cluster, cluster list. Okay, cool. Um, the clusters, Argo CD has a list of clusters, right? So where does Argo CD keep that? In the database? No. This is cloud native. Um, <laughs> we don't want state, <laughs> stateful stuff. Um, we, we use etcd for stateful stuff. So if you do a K get a secret, it's actually sort of a secret. Um, oh, cool. GitOps, oper not a GitOps operator, OpenShift GitOps. There you go. Yeah. Oops, there we go. Oh, OK. Let's do. Uh, oh, it's because your font's so big? Or... Yeah. Oh, so big. Grep. Greppo. Oh, that's that's a weird kind of cookie, Greppo. <laughs> yeah, Greppo. <yeah. laughs> um, so here, so the, there, there's a secret um, for each corresponding cluster, right? So if I do, let me clear the screen. Uh, get secrets. We should get ops and this. Oops. This secret. Um, let's edit this here. Oops. My fingers aren't where it should be. Okay, edit. So um, each secret, uh, each cluster has a corresponding secrets in Argo. Mm -hmm. um, there is, um, in the secret is data config. And this config is just nothing more than the um, cube, um, cube config file. Mm -hmm. um, the name, right? So the name is base64 encoded and the server is also, um, is, uh, base 64 encoded. So if I take, let's just say name, yeah. right? And then I do an echo, um, uh, oops, base you can do this, 64. I believe. I can do it. Right. See, there you go. It's a cluster. Cluster one. There you go. Cluster one. Cool. And then uh, let's look at the other one. Right. And then server. Right. And then we do that base 64. Sixty four, right, and it just shows the the connection of the API, right? So, um, so the reason I'm showing you the secret and the um, the fields in there is because this is what the um, the cluster generator uses, right? And so, it'll uh, this name right here corresponds to the name field in the secret. Um, server here, right, line, line 26, corresponds to that server field in that secret, right? So basically, it takes the secret, it'll, um, it'll uh, um, glean that information from the secret depending on the, the, the fields in the, in the secret. Um, that's how it, it builds it, right? But how, how does it know where to deploy the application, right? Um, and this is where the cluster has something called uh, labels, uh, match label selectors. And so, um, here I have a label, I'm saying BGD colon dev. So anything that I want to deploy the dev um, version of my application, right? So here again, remember I'm, I'm, I'm specif oops, specifying dev. Um, I'm gonna label, I'm gonna use that label in order to assign it, right? And, and, and how do I assign it with the label is it, I basically label the secret. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna label the secret then the application says, says, okay, you want this cluster to have the dev version. Um, I'm going to build it based on the information that I'm getting from the secret. And how that looks is, so first let's, um, first let me close this because I think I've accidentally made a change. Don't save. There we go. And then let's, let's open it up again. Oops. There we go. 
Um, do, 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 do. Where are we? Yeah. Okay. So do uh, apply. So apply. I don't want list generator. I want cluster generator. And then I want um, application set. Right. And so boom, it's created. But if I go back here, nothing happened. Right. So um, a reason nothing happened is I haven't labeled anything already. So, um, and this is a, a good opportunity to talk about um, troubleshooting. If I do a K, uh, get pods in um, OpenShift GitOps, there is um, a pod called application set controller. So, this is the one um, that you want to take a look at, right? So, just kind of to be clear, application sets aren't built into Argo. It's actually a separate controller that all it does is that it builds application that Argo knows how to consume. So it's not like a, um, it's not built into Argo. It's just something that interfaces into Argo. So that way they can have different life cycles in terms of coding. So if I do a um, K logs of that guy, so one of the things here, uh, yeah, so it says here, generated zero applications, right? So it generated simple applications because it didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. So if I do, um, let me clear the screen again. Get secrets. Could Argo CD use only cluster labels? like cluster and node labels, maybe? Is that possible? That's a question from Chad. Yeah. Uh, oh, from William. Hey, William. Um, I only want uh, clust only cluster labels. Can you clarify that? Yeah. Just a little you bit. I, cluster I, I... plus node labels. Is that possible? Oh. Like, you, don't, you don't want to use Argo labels at all? On this? I'm... Well, no, I, I think... Uh, do you, uh, are, you, are you talking about... Yeah, I think that's a, that's a separation of... Like you want to deploy to a specific set of nodes mm -hmm. on a cluster. And I think that's what I mean. If you can clarify that, um, yeah. we can. So here, um, you know, going back down this path. So for those of you who are using ACM, this is um, analogous says, yes. to. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is analogous to, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reference that in a little bit. Uh, this is analogous to placement rules, right? So if I do a K um, uh, label of this, uh, I think I have to I have to do secret, right? K label, secret, and then what um, what key value did I say? Oh, BGD dev, BGD dev in um, open shift get ops. All right. So as soon as I label that guy, um, it, it creates the application on cluster three, and so. Uh, so like this is cluster one, it should be down. Cluster two, it should be down. Cluster three should be down, but maybe it, it'll, no, it's not, it, it'll, it already deployed. So it um, deployed the application on cluster three. So if I wanted to deploy it, let's say, okay, well that, that, that's awesome. Let, let's go to cluster two. Uh, cluster two here. If I label that guy, Go over here, applications, and then all of a sudden, cluster two um, gets this application. So, if you want to, a, you should get a yellow square. Sweet, yellow square. So, if you want to, um, so this is so for those of you so, um, familiar with ACM, this is similar to placement rules. Essentially, you um, you pick a cluster based on the label. So it's like, hey, I want to deploy it on this cluster. All you need to do is just label the secret, and then it'll go ahead and deploy um, that application there. So now, um, uh, to William's question, right? So uh, the answer is no, you're labeling uh, a cluster. You want to deploy the application to that cluster. If you wanted to um, deploy it to a specific set of nodes, you would have to edit the manifest, the actual, like, actually going here and doing uh, node selectors in the actual oh, deployment of the application. Okay. So, um, although that that's an interesting use case where it's right, like, like can, can you do that for me? 
right? Like, like right? Like, it, it'd not? be nice. <laughs> yeah, why, like, why not? That's actually a pretty, pretty interesting use case because um, I don't want to have to worry about managing my labels in each one of these, like, directories, right? Like, because right. then I would, his, I would have, yeah. He says his use case is deployed to a cluster with label X that has no types of GPUs. The GPUs, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Like, that, that, and then I think that makes complete sense. Um, so the answer is no. And the way you would do it is just put it in the deployment. However, I think it's a very interesting idea because then at that at that point, yeah. I just have to sky's um, the limit at that point. Yeah, yeah, the sky's the limit at that point, right? <laughs> like I can I can start mixing and matching there. So mm -hmm. um so there that's the um that's the idea of the cluster generator. Um so so the next one that's up, uh let's uh, let's delete this here. Uh, oh, one thing I do have to, uh, I want to mention, I do have this other one here. If um, if you want to target all clusters, right? Like if you just like, I, I don't care about selectors, just put it in everything, um, in every cluster that I have. Uh, if you just provide an empty an empty list of the clusters, it'll deploy to all the clusters. So yeah, William says yet another RFE. He has like, so I um, William is uh, one of our uh, telco architects um, and I, I speak to him um, semi-regularly. Uh, there's a few RFEs that we've, we've come up with just by chatting about these use cases. So, um, and also since it's alpha, if you have use cases, feel free to reach out. Um, the Argo CD team um, engineers, especially the ones at Red Hat are very uh, receptive. Like they, they love these use cases, right? Cause you know, um, you know, just imagine you're just like in a corner coding all day. It's kind of hard to kind of, you know, like if you're just coding all day, it, it's, you know, you don't have a chance to get all these use cases out. Um, they're very appreciative of, uh, of use cases and very open too. Uh, shout out, uh, shout out to Shubik who leads that team. He's, it's, it's a great team at Red Hat here. Uh, let me see here. Next is, yeah. So if you want to target all clusters, just give it an empty set. Empty set means all. Um, so, all right, next one. Next one is actually my favorite one. Um, and it's one of the ones that I use a lot. It's the, let me close these because we don't need these anymore. Uh, don't save. Where am I? Get dir. So the get dir generator. So this is um, GitHub directory generator. So this here, it all it does, it looks at your Git repo, looks at your directory structure, and then just deploys applications depending on your directory structure. And so um, since Chris, you know, I'm very, um, uh, I guess, I guess there's no easy way to put it opinionated about directory structures. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is one of my favorites because, um, all it, it, there's no need for like key value pairs or there's no, there's no, um, there's nothing, there's no logic that you need to, to built into, into it. It's just depending on how your, uh, Git repo is laid out. It'll lay out your applications that same way. So, um, <laughs> Hillary, uh, Br Braided Silver says opinionated. I guess that's a <laughs> that is a nice way of putting it. Um, and so, so here I'm give basically the generator. You say I'm gonna give you a Git repo, right? Um, and then look in this path, and you notice how there's a star um, there, right? Basically, it says pick up all the directories that you find in this path and then create my applications based on that. So I have something called, um, uh, so let's see here, um, you know, it'll take path, right? And base name, so base name is like built in, right? So path base name, meaning whatever you find in star. Um, and then down here, it says, build me an application based on that. Um, you know, here I'm gonna deploy to cluster one in a namespace price list and then, um, in the path that it found, right? So this whole this whole thing, and then it'll name it based on the namespace, right? So the best way to see how this works is if I go over here, get dir generator applications. So here I have, um, how do I go here? I think I just have to, anyone from uh, um, Octotree that's on, I have an RFE. Um, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I give you a tool and you yeah, must. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Here's the Git dirt uh, generator. So here I have three applications, right? I have um, 
an application uh, that's just a that's a bunch of YAML, right? So mm -hmm. this is YAML, just a bunch of this is my all front end YAMLs. application. All the YAMLs, all essentially this is my front end, um, and then I have a a database which is actually a Helm chart. So this is interesting. So I have an application made up of some YAML that I've written and a Helm chart that basically I'm just consuming a, a service right here. In this, in this case, I am using the Bitnami's, um, where's my values? There it is. The Bitnami's um, uh, MySQL database, right? Cause I'm gonna create like to say an HA database, right? So here, this is kind of interesting. I have an application that I've written um, and I'm gonna just use a database from a Helm chart that I found. And then I have some uh, configuration that does things like sets up um, RBAC and sets up uh, the, um, uh, the namespace, you know, kind of config like things. And so if I go back here, so here, essentially, since I have three directories, it'll create three applications, right? It'll look in this path. It'll take, um, it'll name it, whatever the base name of this path is. So if I go back, uh, so the base name, it'll be prices front end would be one application. Prices DB would be the next application and prices config would be the last one. Um, and that's how it gets the name. And then the complete path, right, is basically everything that I found it here. So, uh, so since the best way to figure things out is to apply it, so let's just apply. Do, do, do. Here we are, get dir generator. And then here, app set. Come on, there it goes. There it goes. Going back to Argo. Here, so now here I have uh, three applications, right? All deployed, cluster one, as you see here. Um, there's a config that goes out, right? That creates all that. Um, so that's one application, right? So that's one directory, as you saw in my, my configuration here. So I press this config. And then there is the DB. It goes here, right? And that's the next one that, that that's going out. And then the uh, the front end, right? So the front end is actually um, waiting. Um, I have sync waves. Again, if you haven't caught that, sync waves um, mm -hmm. and hooks. So it's basically waiting for the DB to come up before um, uh, before it actually finishes deploying. So if we go to the DB, um, this is all, this is a lot for a database, for yeah. a simple database. But um, I, I kind of wanted to show if I go over here, cluster one, if I do K, get pods, um, price list. I have a um, HA, because I just wanted to get fancy and do an HA <laughs> example of... Um, There's operators for that, you know. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And so uh, I just wanted to get fancy and do a Helm chart for this uh, database thing here for, for the first cluster. So um, that's how that works. I have, um, base, based on your directory structure, um, it'll deploy different, um, different applications based on that, on that directory structure. So this is pretty cool. If, um, you know, this works if you have like, um, um, like a model repo with, with all mm -hmm. your deployments and all the, so you can like in one shot, just deploy that, that whole, that whole application stack. So, yeah, um, it's also like, it's like GitOps on steroids. It feels like, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a way to, um, um, uh, to massively uh, deploy these out. Yeah. So um, one of my one of my favorite actually favorite things about Argo is when they came out with application sets. I was like, yes, this yeah. is no, I awesome. I can tell your excitement just by talking about them in chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> I didn't need to see um, your face. I already yeah. knew. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, I was also talking to to Gerald, uh, one of the architects in Canada. Um, I talk about him often on on the on the stream, but um, mm. uh, like. I, I was like literally like like shaking. I'm like, you don't understand. This is, you know, this is a game changer. And then he's like, yeah, whatever. And then like a few weeks later, he goes, oh yeah, no, I, I see why you like these. Yeah. <laughs> after 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 he started playing with it for a little bit, he goes, oh yeah, I, I could see, I could see why you like this. Oh yeah, I can um, see why anybody would like this. Absolutely. So uh, the last one, 
So if none of these, so the last one is kind of one of those catch-alls, like if none of these tickle your fancy mm -hmm. sort of things. Um, the last one here, um, and I think we're doing pretty good on time. Um, we do have a hard stop today, by the way. I have yeah, yeah. So I, I think, I think, I think it's 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 actually we did pretty good on on time here. Yeah. Um, is the what we call the Git uh, file generator, right? So mm. what's the Git file generator? So Git mm. file generator will deploy your application based on a config file you have stored inside of Git. So Fancy. here here is you say okay. Um, this repo, this path, right? In every directory every you find. Every subdirectory, yeah. Yeah, every directory you find in this path, there's going to be a config.json file. Mm. That's what I want you to read. That's what your, your this is the application set does. And in that file, it can, so in this file, it can be configured however you want it to be, as long as it's valid JSON. That's all, that's mm. really the only, um, there, there's, there's two prerequisites. One, it has to be JSON. So there's a, um, there's a, um, RFE to out also do a YAML, but right now it's just JSON. Um, and as long as it's valid, right? So it's, it, it, so this is kind of a, whatever your wildest dreams could be. So. Right. Braid and um, Silver asks, can the, the same thing be done with Docker files? Can this know. same thing? I don't think so. Done with Docker files. I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. That's interesting. Cause this is Argo that's operating on. Yeah. 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 So it, it'd be interesting um, to find out if this uh, can it can read it read them? Them? Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. While this tree, um, can it can it read? Uh, no, for for at least for this one, no. It has to be a config.json file. Like it has to actually say config.json um, or something.json. Doesn't have to say be config, but it has to be valid JSON. Um, so if I go here and I look at the Git file generator. Um, I have a here, if you notice, I have cluster one with a config here, a cluster two with a config and three. So if I go over here and look at this JSON file, it's essentially, um, I'm just building a config, right? Name, server, overlay. Here, this is, um, if Gerald, if you're watching this, he had kind of a, a RFE on list generator. Um, but I, I think the config.json one would probably work would have worked as well for his use case because um, it could be whatever your key value pairs you want. It could literally be foo bar. It could be dumb equals yes. It could be whatever you want um, because all it's doing it's reading that file and then taking you know cluster dot name. It takes it actually from this config file cluster name right um, here cluster dot overlay is cluster overlay uh, cluster dot server cluster dot server like and then you know namespace it could have been cluster i could add namespace here right and then put it in there it'll so this is essentially whatever your wildest dreams nariv <laughs> nariv um, <laughs> um and so uh um so this this is how it, it builds that out so if i go here um here cluster one i'll do a cluster one overlay that sort of thing so if i go back to argo yeah, see, so uh, press this is, is up and running. As soon as it's up and running, let's delete it. So we do have a hard stop. I like to do the big reveal of nice. uh, apply. And this is git generator application set. Go, go. The factory is going brrr. And then, um, Notice how it's deploying this application now, right? So depending on, um, if, can I look at the config here? I think I can. App details, manifest. There we go. Um, you know, it basically it it um it took that config.json file and just added boom 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 boom. So, um, so yeah, so that's the um, uh, the uh, I guess get. Yeah, application sets in general. Mm -hmm. uh, one last thing I want to mention about application sets is you notice the generators are it's a um, it's an array, so you can actually mix and match generators. You don't have to have separate generators. You can actually use git dir along with git file along with right. So you can okay. um, you can actually use all 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 four of them if you want mm -hmm. all at once. In one application set, that's they don't Beautiful. you don't they don't like stack on each other, right? So like 
you can actually override things. So if you have to kind of be careful, but you can technically use, use them all together. So, um, so yeah, that's application awesome. sets in under an hour. So Good I, job, I, sure. I'm going to need some water. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cause it was uh nonstop talking. This is, I do have a corresponding blog about this. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Crap. I should have grabbed sets, that before the uh, show. Open shift blog. I do have, for some reason it didn't show up. Who will find it first? Who will find it first? Yeah, this is probably like the last thing I want to show before we leave. Oh, dang it. Clock is ticking too. Let's do. Oh, man. It was recently, was it not? There we go. I, there found it. it. Okay. Yes, I you. found it. I, uh, there's there's a blog about this, right? So this is the stream version of this blog that I've written. So uh, check out the blog. Um, I go through it in in gruesome detail. Um, essentially, the um, all the different mix and matching. So um, so yeah, awesome, so it's cool. I think I think we're, we're I think we're good. We we have a hard stop. Yeah, forty seconds to go. Let's uh, appreciate let's that. Wrap it up. Yep. All right, buddy. <laughs> thank you again. Thank you, audience, for tuning in. And yeah, thank you, everyone. Stay safe out there, but everybody, please. Yep. yep. Cheers, everyone.